I have a very brief homily for you today, but before my brief homily, Father wanted me to uh, make sure you understood what these candles are doing up here. You know, we are not a church that does a lot with candles, having lost one of the churches uh, in the past to uh, fire. There's a photograph downstairs in the parish hall of St. Joan of Arc in Alton in flames. So we're really careful about candles. But this week, we had All Saints Day on Thursday, we had All Souls Day on Friday, and yesterday the parish, or pastoral council, worked to provide a mass of remembrance for all 42 members of the extended St. Catherine Drexel family who died over the past 12 months. There's actually a list of their names up there if you want to come up and look at it. There is one candle there for every member of the extended family of our parish who, who died. So la uh, last night at the 4 o'clock Mass, we would read the name, we would light a candle, we would toll a bell, and give a white rose to any member of the family who was here. Now, there are white roses left over. So anyone here who did lose someone from their family or a close friend, please do take a rose. Uh, they're beautiful roses. They don't last long. Please help yourselves. And if you want to see for whom we prayed last night, you can see the list right there. Now, this poses a pretty serious problem for Father because he is no fan of candles. And he said to me back in the narthex, we got a problem. They really like the candles. <laughs> so uh, you take that up with Father, okay? As for my brief homily, I, I want first to welcome Father Cole back to his parish after two weeks on pilgrimage in Greece and Rome. Oh. Over in the uh, parish office, we imagined that uh, after two weeks in the Mediterranean, Father might come back, and he'd come back with a deep tan with designer sunglasses, and he'd be saying things like, Ciao, bello, arrivederci. But, uh, Father Cole is still Father Cole, and we thank God for him. I'd also like to thank our parishioners for being so helpful and staying so healthy while both Father Cole and Deacon Charlie were away. Monsignor Kelly, during one of his visits, anointed one person from away, and I conducted funeral services for someone outside the parish. But all of our regular parishioners seem really eager to stay healthy at least until Father Cole's return. I suspect there's a Harvard Medical School study in that phenomenon somewhere. We really shouldn't be surprised when our connections among one another have an effect on our health and on our daily lives. In today's Gospel, Jesus starts with Moses' words from Deuteronomy, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the Shema, the most important prayer of Judaism. This prayer affirmed almost 3,000 years ago, our God as the only God, and the Jews as his people, among many peoples at that time who had many gods. It also committed us to loving our God wholeheartedly. Devout Jews say this prayer once in the morning and once in the evening. It is the very first prayer that a Jewish child learns. It is their bedtime prayer. And it is the prayer that tradition says a devout Jew hopes to say as his or her last words. A Jewish household is required by scripture and tradition to take a parchment on which the Shema has been written, roll it up, and place it in a mezuzah. And if you've ever seen a mezuzah, this holds a parchment roll with the Shema on it. This one happens to be made of, uh, well, not really gold, but pla gold plastic and, and glass. And this mezuzah is then affixed to the doorpost according to an exact ritual and when entering the house, the observant Jew kisses his fingers and touches the fingertips to the mezuzah to show his reverence for God. 
It is a very safe bet that the house of Joseph the carpenter, his wife Mary, and their son Jesus had on its doorpost a mezuzah containing this prayer, the Shema, which young Jesus would have learned when very young and which he would have said before bed throughout his life. Christ's audience knew the Shema, but never in any major rabbinical teaching had his second commandment been combined with the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That was something new. The scribe who asked the question would know this, just as he would know the 613 mitzvot commandments of Jewish law and the thousands of rules and regulations that followed them. He also knew that love of God and love of neighbor were more important than all the formal rituals and technical laws. That's why he receives our Lord's approval. Love of God, love of neighbor. Our Catholic moral theology builds on these, teaching us that to love our neighbor is to love our God, since our neighbor is a child of God even as we are. We are all filled with God's Holy Spirit. We are actual physical temples of the Holy Spirit. As scripture tells us again and again, I actually counted 16 statements of that when I was preparing for today. What we do to our neighbor, we do to our Lord, as he himself tells us in Matthew 25. Truly I tell you, he says, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The thought that it really is a child of God sitting next to you right now is both hopeful and awe-inspiring, if you take it to heart. When we give each other the sign of peace in a few minutes, you're going to be looking into the eyes of God's beloved child, face to face with the Holy Spirit within that human being. Our catechism teaches us the only begotten Son of God wanting to make us sharers in his divinity assumed our nature so that he made man might make men gods. That is an astounding statement. I, I probably didn't really encounter that until I was in my uh, 40s. Uh, you can find it if you want to look it up in the Catechism, number 460. That really is what it says. The great Christian writer C.S. Lewis, whose Narnia tales you probably know, he understood this. He said, It is a serious thing to live in a society of possible gods and goddesses. All day long, we are, in some degree, helping each other to one of these destinations. There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. Next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Rick. That's terrific. So, um, over by St. Joseph here, we have the Book of Life, and we encourage you to put names of family, friends, neighbors who've gone before us, and we're going to remember them at every Mass during November. So, Declan, would you mind going and get the book for me, and we're going to put it on the altar. Uh, the Book of Life, right in front of St. Joseph here. I think it's so important that uh, we can't mention them by name, but we can remember them collectively as part of uh, the body of Christ and the family of God. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Please stand now, and I'm going to ask us to pray the Apostles' Creed, because the Apostles' Creed has the communion of saints. 